First, review the contents of the box to ensure you have everything you need. Unpack canisters by lifting from the metal frame on top and not the valve. If collecting samples with different flow controller settings or durations, confirm they are correct and you can clearly identify which is which. If tubing and fittings are needed to sample subsurface or a hard to reach area, you will find these items in all instructions in an enclosed plastic bag. Next, verify the valve is securely closed and remove the brass cap from the top of the valve. Using your hands, attach the regulator to the canister, finger tightening the nut onto the canister. You should be able to thread the nut with minimal resistance for multiple turns. If there is resistance to tighten from the start, do not continue tightening as you could strip the threading. Loosen and verify proper seating before proceeding to finger tighten. Once finger tightened, finish tightening the regulator with a 9 16 inch wrench. It should take approximately a quarter inch turn. Do not over tighten because that could cause leaks. There should be no play at the connection when fully secure. Next, confirm canister vacuum after transport and conduct a leak check if desired. Make sure the brass cap at the top of the flow regulator is on tight. Then flip the toggle valve to the open position. If your can has a rotary valve, turn one full rotation counterclockwise until you meet resistance. The gauge needle should now drop to between negative 25 and negative 30 inches of mercury of vacuum. If it does not, there is a problem, and you should reach out to your contact at pace. If you hear hissing or see the gauge pressure dropping quickly, close the valve promptly and check fittings to ensure they are snug. Then, flip the toggle valve or turn the rotary valve back to the closed position. With the brass cap secure and the valve closed, the flow controller should hold the vacuum as originally documented. If the pressure drops, this could indicate a loose connection at the canister, at the brass nut, or within the flow controller, which may impact your sampling event. When you are ready to sample, remove the brass cap from the top of the flow regulator by turning counterclockwise using a 9 16 inch wrench. Attach any tubing as needed with the included fittings and ferrules. Then open the valve and record the initial pressure on the chain of custody. When sampling is complete, close the valve. There should be a little bit of vacuum remaining so the lab can confirm that there were no leaks during return transport. Remove the regulator using the 9 16 inch wrench. Replace the brass cap on the can. Fill out the remaining information on the COC and canister tag and place sample identification labels, if included, on the back of the canister tag. Pack the cans and regulators back into the box, similar to the way you received them. They are now ready for return shipment to the lab.